Hello there, good evening, and you're watching Business Live on the Joy News channel with me, Charles Aitim. Tonight, Goyle embarks on a recruitment drive to, for local engineers as it awaits ExxonMobil oil discovery. We have more good news from Goyle as it also ended 2019 with strong growth as well. Also, Ghana has become the latest recipient a global safety and hygiene stamp. We have all these and more coming up shortly. And you're welcome back. Now, Ghana's downstream petroleum player, Goyle, is awaiting results of data collected by its partner, ExxonMobil, for the exploration of oil in the offshore Cape Three Point. The company has also invested in nationwide recruitment of local engineers and geologists to help in the exploration and production process. Merging Director of Goyle, Kwame Ose Pepra, Prempa, I should rather say, disclosed this to Joy Business after a virtual annual meeting of the company. Here's a report. Goyle Offshore, a subsidiary of the Goyle Group, signed a partnership agreement with the American oil production giant, ExxonMobil, to explore oil in the deep water Cape Three Points. After a few months of signing the agreement, the company has begun work on the data from the field to examine the potential of managing director of Goyle, Kwame Osei Prempe, told Joy Business that Goyle is ready to receive a positive news from the team soon after training some local engineers and geologists to support the operation. John is very, so much experience in this. Though, so they've collected the seismic data they have taken it to their, head, their office in the U.S. They are analyzing. Uh, um, so far, we believe that the information they are giving us is good. Then the major benefit to us is that Goyal, we have uh, a subsidiary Goyal Offshore. We have recruited young, brilliant Ghanaians, engineers, geologists, geological engineers and others who are being trained by Exxon. So technology transfer. So you believe that even at the end of it, if you don't get what you really want, we have made an investment in Ghanaians which will go to benefit this country moving forward. Meanwhile, the company, after ending the year with a 105.5 million city profit, declared some dividends for shareholders. Here is board chairman Kwame Nabatels. Declaring that dividend. We said we were involved in a lot of projects which is going to help the company increase its profitability in the future and the various investments that we have made in those projects is the reason why we had declared that amount of profit. Goal grew by more than 9% attributed to mining diesel, bunkering and aviation fuel. Well, it started the year as the best performing currency in the first two months. But the city is now placed eighth among currencies on the African continent. It has since January 1st lost about 2.61% to the dollar. Now, Joy Business takes a look at the performance of the local currency in comparison with other currencies on the continent. Here's a report. Even though the city's performance has been relatively better in previous years, it could have done better at this time of the year because of its good run experience during the beginning of the year. The announcement by the Bank of Ghana to banks to hold on to dividend payments and other measures appears to have been doing the trick. The partial lockdown of the economy also caused some reduction in trading activity on the foreign exchange market, thus keeping a certain level of stability. 
Together with other currencies, the local currency also had profited from low demand pressures, largely because of the COVID-19 pandemic due to the reduction in imports. However, recent uptake in corporate demand for Forex, coupled with this investment of some city denominated securities by foreign investors, is a major concern going forward. Courage Mate is a currency and economic analyst at Data Bank and has been explaining to Joy Business the position of the local currency so far. The city has maintained a very stable performance since then and we haven't seen any disruptions to the performance of the city on the market and investors generally expected a lot of the numbers that came out and so there wasn't much shock that would be priced into the exchange rates as a result of the mid-year budget review. And so the city has maintained quite stable performance on the market. On the retail market, it has actually gained 0.1% since the mid-year budget review. According to the tracking of the performances of currencies on the continent, the CFA France, used by eight ECOWAS countries, is the best performing currency on the African continent, appreciating by about 5.64% to the dollar. It is followed by the Moroccan Denham, Tunisian Dina, and the Egyptian pound, which have all increased in value against the American currency. The Tanzanian shilling, the Ugandan shilling, and the Malawian kwasha have also fared better than the city, do have lost value to the dollar. The city has also done better than the Kenyan shilling, the Nigerian naira, and the South African rand on the continent. That was a report by Charles Nixon Yeboa on the city performance against the other currencies on the African continent. Now, Ghana has become the latest recipient of the world's first ever global safety and hygiene stamp, which was recently launched by the World Trade Travel and Tourism Council. Ghana's Minister of Tourism, Art and Culture, Honorable Barbara Otinjusi, explains that this development justifies activities put in place by government for a safe travel stamp for Ghana. The storm created by the WTTC in May this year allows travelers to identify destinations and businesses around the world which have adopted the global standardized health and hygiene protocols. The tourism minister had earlier spoken to George Riafi on PM Express Business Edition on various interventions introduced to safe tourism in Ghana amid COVID-19. Um, the first window for applications closed and we had over a thousand applications. Um, we have, um, the consultant has gone through about a hundred of those It has um, submitted recommendations to the grants committee. So the grants committee will sit and go through those recommendations and approve um, based on the criteria and then we'll do some disbursement. Mm -hmm. So very soon, the second window, then they'll start working on the, uh, the, the other, the backlog as well, mm -hmm. whilst they open the second window to receive more applications. So we want to support as many of our SMEs as possible, and especially also our women-owned businesses mm. or women-led businesses, because we know that um, the SME sector, uh, the value chain of the tourism sector has a lot of um, SME women-owned businesses. So we want to support as many of these businesses as possible, and we encourage them to apply. The, the economist will always say that all other things being equal, uh, what period are we looking at that with all holding these factors constant, uh, we could start the disbursement with respect to this uh, World Bank facility? I think the um, first tranche of disbursement, we are at the end of July. I think by the middle of August, the first tranche disbursements will be made. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do, do, you, do you believe that with some of these targeted stimulus support and all the rest, the sector that you want to see as the lead contributor to the economy in 10 years uh, is going to turn the corner? Definitely, because you know, with this project that we are implementing, the Ghana Tourism Development Project, is looking at um, the various challenges that confront the industry and lending the support to address them. So as we complete this first phase, we can get even more support to do bigger things. Mm. Well, let's now speak to the CEO of the Ghana Tourism Authority, Akosi Ajeman, who joins us on the phone lines for more on this development. 
Welcome to the program, sir. So if you could hear me, first of all, uh, this is big for the tourism industry. It also preps up the eye that currently stays on Ghana when it comes to tourism. It means there is more work to be done. All right, thank you. Uh, yes, it is big. Uh, we're quite excited with the stamp, the safety stamp, and the timing couldn't have been any better. Coming just around the time that our airport is about to open, it really gives the confidence that most travelers will need in choosing destinations that they could go to. And having gone through the protocols and having gone through all the safety uh, rituals, if I should put it that way, I think that the WTTC have found Ghana as uh, ready to receive travelers and also to put Ghana out there on the map that is a safe destination for travelers. This is good news. Interestingly, we're having this good news, as you rightly stated, amidst a global pandemic. We have seen interventions from a global scale and even a national scale as well. To what end does this endorse Ghana's tourism sector when it comes to preparations and restrictive measures in stopping the spread of COVID-19 in the tourism sector? I mean, I think if you look at the work that has been done, I mean, the leadership that has been shown by His Excellency, the President, and the uh, the presidential task force and the entire uh, health service, you realize that this was to be expected at some point. Um, now, a lot of people are looking at living life in the new normal. And I think we cannot forever have our body shut. Like the president is declared when he was recently out during the after uh, office. I mean, having the continental free trade um, here, hosted in Ghana, means that at some point in time we will expect more people to be coming in. And so for us in the sector, it was important that we work with the professionals, listen to advice, and see how we can put in place the protocols of safety. That really will bring the confidence that we need for people to start looking at Ghana as a destination. Obviously, Beyond the Return is also one of the major projects that we are embarking on. And I believe that once we have this stamp and once the borders are open, it will start getting people moving back into destination. And I think we're quite excited. There's still more work to be done in terms of monitoring the various establishments, the tourist sites, uh, the restaurants and the hotels. And I believe the protocol that we have engaged them on is quite simple and very straightforward. It's also very helpful that it's a standardized international uh, protocol. And so... We will be looking at how we can do the monitoring, make right. sure the implementation is going as expected. Great. Speaking of the monitoring, um, just, just, just amid COVID-19, we do know, uh, we have in hints that the Tourism uh, Authority has embarked on some particular moves to classify tourism sites, you know, according to their preparations and the safety measures ensuring COVID-19 safety. How far with that particular reform? Yeah, that has already been passed, the LI-2393 by Parliament. And so we've started the registration of tourist sites. You know, hitherto, tourist sites were not licensed to operate. We do always license hotels and other establishments. But now we are in a position to license tourist sites based on the classification and based on the new LI-2393. What we have done is to more or less engage the various sites, let them know that these are the new rules of engagement, security, safety, hygiene protocols are going to be uh, followed. And especially also management of these sites have to be at par, as we at a certain level that will bring confidence to the industry. And so all these things are coming together at a time that we needed it most. And so we are quite happy. As you rightly stated, when borders are open, we're hopefully going to see more travel numbers, which is going to impact on investment and business activity. Can you estimate the monetary impact that this particular safety and hygiene stamp would have on Ghana's tourism industry? I mean, it's still early days. I think um, with this release came yesterday. We've been knocking on the doors, I mean, since May, when the first stamp was issued. So I think in Africa, it was Egypt. And we've been knocking on the doors. We've gone back and forth on, on it. We're still uh, looking at ways that we can. It's not necessarily how much of an impact monetary-wise, but how much of an impact confidence-wise, so that people can say, 
Ghana is a safe destination because now we want people are going to travel. There will be some apprehension. Is this destination safe? Are there protocols that will ensure that I can travel in and come back safe? And so that for us is more important at this stage. We will do the numbers because we've already lost two quarters. And so, I mean, per estimation, every quarter you will expect about 250,000 people coming in. The fact that we are in a position to start receiving visitors and start positioning Ghana back as a destination of tourism now. Akosia Jiman, many thanks for having me. He is the CEO of the Ghana Tourism Authority there. Away from that, we can now confidently say that Ghana has bounced back to the days of vehicle assembly, now reshaping the automobile industry to create jobs while industrializing, industrializing the economy. Now, since the establishment of an automobile bill in Ghana, and we've engaged almost all the players in the automotive industry, from the new assemblers to the second-hand dealers. Well, earlier on the marketplace, I engaged some dealers in the second-hand car business to better understand what has changed in terms of pricing and other related matters in the wake of Ghana's niche automobile industry. Take a look. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty going on in the market right now due to the fact that um, about 80% that we um, uh, import to Ghana are usually salvage vehicles because it's the most affordable by the um, low wages, you know, citizens of the country. And now, due to the fact that the new bill um, seeks to ban all importations of, um, we are, I have about ten orders on hold because by the time the vehicle gets to Ghana, um, the, it will be affected uh, by the new bill, meaning that um, they cannot um, clear the cars from the port. So the, the market is really um, hanging on a thread right now. I believe the, the bill um, has, uh, you know, um, a lot of positive um, consequences for the country, especially um, having new manufacturers, you know, coming to Ghana to try to create jobs. However, um, I tried to pull the bill. Since I first heard about it, I went online and tried to pull the bill myself to read it, but the bill was nowhere to be found. So. I just read bits and pieces from various news outlets and kind of put together what um, is really in the bill. And what I noticed is that in, in an effort to bring in new manufacturing jobs in Ghana, the used car dealers and, and um, uh, body works and mechanics are going to suffer deeply with this bill because, um, as you know, when accident vehicles come into the uh, country, they need body work done. Um, they need painting, and, um, and by so doing, cutting all salvage vehicles, this is uh, going to reduce the amount of work that the laborers, as far as used car mechanics and um, uh, used car dealers, are going to take a huge hit, you know, um, with this new bill. Well, that's all time will allow us on this edition of The Business Live with me, Charles Aite. For me and the rest of the team, many thanks for watching. Have a good evening.